Hello again, my name's John, a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK, and welcome to my latest cheese making video. And in this recipe, I'll be using this amazing mozzarella and ricotta cheese making kit from cheeseandyogurtmaking.co.uk. And this is their home page, but I'll leave a link directly to the kit page in the description box below the video. In my previous video, I made the mozzarella cheese using this kit, but in this one, I'll be making the ricotta cheese. Now ricotta is a much quicker and simpler cheese to make. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. Ok, let's get on with today's recipe. I quickly go through what's included in the kit. First, the all-important instruction and information booklet, containing ingredient measurements and full instructions. Next, it includes a top quality cheesecloth. The very important thermometer, which includes the pan clip. 100 grams of pure cheese salt. 100 grams of citric acid, very important in making mozzarella and ricotta cheese. And lastly, it's the powdered rennet that is included with the kit. But you don't need the rennet in this ricotta recipe. Just the citric acid and the cheese salt. Always start any cheese recipe by sterilising all your equipment. I like to use boiling water, but chemical sterilising can also be used, such as bleaching or an antibacterial agent. Obviously, make sure any chemicals that are used are thoroughly rinsed off. Right, on to the milk. It's important to use the correct milk when making ricotta cheese. And the best milk to use is whole, unhomogenized milk. I like to use Guernsey or Jersey cow unhomogenized milk. The result of this milk is a rich and creamy coloured ricotta. But any unhomogenized whole milk will give you great results. So I'll get my 4.5 litres or 1 imperial gallon of milk into the pan. For my UK viewers, there's a link to raw milk suppliers in the description box below the video. Once your milk's in the pan, lift it over to the stove. Once your pan's on the stove, clip your provided thermometer to the pan. I'm using my large dial thermometer so you can see it more clearly in the video. Time to add the citric acid. You can add it straight to the pan if you like and stir it in, but I like to dissolve it in 50ml of filtered or bottled water first. Slowly add the citric acid while stirring very gently. Now you can turn on your hob to a medium heat and bring the milk up to a temperature of 85 degrees Celsius, that's 185 Fahrenheit. Now this should take around 20 minutes stirring occasionally. If you try to get there any quicker by increasing the heat, you risk burning the milk on the bottom of the pan. Around halfway, you should see clumps of ricotta starting to form. And that's it, I've reached the target temperature. So turn off the heat, and if you're on an electric hob, take it off the ring altogether. Remove the thermometer and give it a final gentle stir. Now get the lid on the pot and let it rest undisturbed for 20 minutes. Ok, while the milk's resting, place a colander in your sterilised sink and line it with your cheesecloth. Once the time's up, remove the lid and carefully transfer the pan to the sink area. Now, using a slotted spoon, start transferring the now fully formed curds to the cheesecloth. You can use a spoon like this, or if you've got one, a spider strainer like this one is much more efficient. Once all of your curds are in the cheesecloth, you should be left with a light green coloured whey. Because of the acid content, I don't find this whey very useful for anything, so I just normally pour it off down the sink.
place a bowl under the colander and lift it onto the bench. Now bring the corners of the cloth together and tie them off as shown. And now you can simply hang your cloth up somewhere and allow the whey to drip out. And as it's not very heavy, I just use the knob on the cupboard door. Once the dripping stops, usually around 10 minutes, you can carefully turn the ricotta out into a bowl. The final thing to do is to add the cheese salt. I like to do this in two goes. If you're planning to use this ricotta in a dessert, making a cheesecake for example, obviously don't add the salt. And in goes the second half of the salt. Give that a good mix. Using a clean fork, give it a quick taste to see if it's seasoned enough for your taste. And that's fine. And that's it, your beautiful creamy ricotta cheese is done. Cover the bowl with cling film. This ricotta will keep in the fridge for four to five days or you can freeze it for up to three months for future use. And as I said at the beginning, it's a delicious, quick and easy cheese to make. And how's that for a beautiful light summer lunch? Oh yes, absolutely delicious. And that's one more big thumbs up for another fantastic cheese recipe from cheeseandyogurtmaking.co.uk. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.